Here I'm just in the process of replacing the missing nuts and bolts and washers and shims from the parts diagram. Yeah, just systematically going through each pinion and spindle and replacing the thrust washers at the back and then we have the washers at the front and the nuts where necessary. Uh, here, for example, we have these tab washers, these locking tab washers. And they're just working through one by one until all the, essentially the hardware is replaced and looking very nice in the back of there. I'm also going to install a couple of these very nice new ET29 cam followers that I bought. So they'll go into the bike. The other two look fine. So I think that's about it for now on the inside of the timing chest and uh, very happy with the hardware and um, had a little few little challenges with some of the nuts um, specifically these were just on the main posts as well and um, they'd been punch locked previously and so I did buy a, a die um, that I used to just chase those threads back and I'm happy with those now and then here on the main idler as you if you just saw um, there, w there was no end float, no end play on this idler. And there's basically no end float. And as we remove this uh, shim here, washer, as we look on the other side, you can see that there's signs of wear. And so what's happening is this shim is rubbing on the bush of the idler rather than the shoulder of the spindle. And so what I did was, um, it was so close that uh, rather than taking the boss off at the back of the casing and then start fiddling with the spindle itself, um, all I did was I just ran the rear of the idler and uh, this is what it looks like. I ran that on some very fine sandpaper. Uh, so it looked like glass actually and what we've accomplished is the about five thousandths clearance here I've just got an oversized nut here with the, a new thrust washer and then the nut on the end just to sort of simulate the end the um, the locking plate going on here but uh, I'm very happy with that that's really uh, a nice sort of end play position for that idler also installed here in the timing case are a couple of brand new cam followers. The other two, I really closely inspected those on both sides and they're in very nice condition. I didn't feel the need to change those. But certainly uh, this one here and this one here, I've replaced those and they're, they're perfect. So thanks again for watching guys. That's about it now I think for this timing chest arrangement um, until we come back to the final rebuild. Uh, next job will be to actually start working on the top end here now. So uh, this upper frame member, this backbone, this is an oil tank for the Vincent. It's held by essentially two pins here and here. And so we'll remove this rear suspension unit and essentially lift this whole upper frame member, including the front forks and the front wheel, away from the engine. We'll obviously suspend the engine with something under here, put the uh, front kickstands down, and then we've got some work to do on the top end of this bike, and then install the push rods, and then start putting things back together again. But uh, for now, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll speak to you again soon. Okay, cheers.